Yo, Dylan. Yo. People want to know if you prefer using Angelus or Jacquard. Hey, what's going on guys? Thank you for joining us for another video. Today, we wanted to go ahead and just answer a bunch of the questions that we get on a daily basis. So we're gonna go through these pretty quickly. Jason's gonna go ahead and ask me my opinion on some of these, and we just wanted to have a place for you guys to easily be able to come back and answer some of the questions that you might be wondering about when it comes to custom sneakers. So let's go ahead and get things started. So I think the way that a beginner should initially grow their clientele is just by starting out painting your own shoes. After you do that, hopefully you have some friends and family that are willing to support you and rock your work. Hopefully they like what you're doing so you can go ahead, paint shoes for them. You could do it for free and now all of a sudden those people are walking billboards for you. From there, you're able to now post multiple shoes to your Instagram feed and all of a sudden anybody who's finding you on the platform can see that you've started to do more and more pairs and then they're going to be more likely to be interested in purchasing something from you. So you could kind of do that in a lather, rinse, repeat, you know, over and over again and that's a very easy way to really just start out adding to your portfolio and getting some initial clients. So I think that anytime you're getting paint peeling up, when you peel back your vinyl, you lay down a stencil or something like that, I'm gonna say somewhere between 75 to 85% of the time, you didn't prep the shoes enough. So chances are you didn't sand them properly, you didn't scuff them up enough, so the paint isn't really adhering. So when you peel back that vinyl, it's gonna come up a whole lot easier. The other 20-ish percent of the time, it could be potentially that you're using the wrong vinyl. That could easily be it or you might have prepped them well, but then all of a sudden you either applied too much paint or didn't allow proper dry time before laying down vinyl stencils. So if you have the option of purchasing kind of what I would consider the perfect base shoe to start out with, and you're wondering, you know, what type of design should I put on there or something like that, my personal recommendation is to purchase an Air Force One. It's a great base shoe, and it has all these different panels where you can do some really cool color blocking. And if you're just wondering what type of design should you potentially do, what I recommend, because I'm a fan of them, is just take a classic Nike SB colorway, something like the Tiffany's, the Ray Guns, the Stussies, um, there's so many that you could do. You could pick a Jordan 1 colorway and just try to recreate that colorway onto the Air Force One. Obviously, a Nike SB Dunk or Jordan 1 is going to have like for like color blocking, similar to the Air Force, so you can easily recreate it in that format. Not specifically if you're trying to get leather based paint. I know a lot of you are asking if you could just walk to your local craft store like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, and just pick up some of that cheap craft paint. The reason that I don't recommend that is because that stuff is so much thicker, it's not gonna bond properly to the shoes. And then once you're finally ready to upgrade to the proper materials, you're gonna need to relearn how to work with them. Working with Angelus is a lot different than working with regular acrylic paint since Angelus is so much thinner. So now all of a sudden, once you're using the right products, you're gonna need to relearn it. So you might as well just start with the right stuff from the jump. Yeah, so the difference between too soft and too hard, those additives are gonna be pretty, you need to take the name pretty literal. Too soft, you're gonna be using that on soft materials, and too hard, you're gonna be using it on too hard materials. I'm a big fan of too soft. Um, before Angelus even made too soft, we were using GAC 900, it's the same thing, but what this does is it helps keep your paint soft. So if you're painting something like a sock liner where people are actually gonna be putting their foot into, you want that material to stay nice and soft. So you're gonna do a one to one ratio with any of your Angelus paints. If you're working on something like a mesh, like on a Nike Roche, you're gonna wanna use too soft and it's gonna help keep that nice and soft. Otherwise, if you just cake on the Angelus paint right on top of it, you're gonna really change the feel of the material. Now, I'm not as big of a fan of too hard because anytime you're using too hard, you're gonna be painting onto a material that is really, really, really hard to get paint to adhere to. And in a way, I almost don't recommend on painting on any of these materials such as plastic, rubber, anything that's really hard like that. It's really, really hard to get paint to adhere to them. No matter how much sanding and prepping you do, if you're trying to paint something like a back tab on a Jordan 3 or 4, that is the time when I use it, but a lot of people think they can just use too hard on things like soles 
and wings on uh, like the wing tabs on Jordan 4s and it's just really hard to get painted here to those surfaces so don't think of too hard as a crutch and you could just magically paint on anything and it's gonna last. Try to be a little hesitant with using too hard and think I'm painting on a really hard material. Is there any way I can kind of avoid this and incorporate its color that it is now into my design? So the way that I think of any sponsorship with a company is it needs to be a two-way street. The first and flat out most important thing is you need to have a following. They want to be able to attract your audience to their company. So the way that we were able to get an Angel sponsorship is just by having a large enough following on Instagram that they know people would be asking us, hey, what products are you using to customize your shoes? As long as we say Angelus, then all of a sudden, now everybody who's following us is gonna end up going to angelusdirect.com. So it makes sense for them to wanna sponsor us. And it goes this way for any sponsorship. That's a good one. And so the thing that I would say here is try to find you need to get inspiration at this point. So the way that I like to do, I'm a huge fan of tattooing and tattoo art in general. So anytime I'm in a creative rut, I have artist block or something like that, I'm just gonna go on a binge of looking at tattoos and get inspiration from there. Look at all the creativity that's out in the world. So really find an art style that inspires you, that you could look into, look into another artist's portfolio, and you'll quickly be able to regain some of that inspiration to keep moving forward. So it really depends where you're getting oversprayed. There's a good chance that maybe you need to switch up your tape. The tape that I use on every single midsole is gonna be the green Scotch 2060. A lot of people have some good luck with that red vinyl tape. I haven't had as good of luck. I prefer the green Scotch 2060 tape. So maybe you need to switch up your tape, find what works best for you. But if you're getting overspray with an a stencil, a vinyl stencil, something like that, chances are you might need to heat set that down a little bit more or you're potentially spraying a little bit too much paint at it in general. So lighten up those coats. It never hurts to go lighter with your paint coats. But if you're potentially talking about you got paint onto an area that it wasn't supposed to be on a shoe, it depends if it's painted or unpainted. You're trying to keep it the factory style. What you could possibly do is just stay, take a Q-tip along with some acetone and rub any of the paint right off or try scraping it off with the toothpick too. So getting your paint to adhere is incredibly important, but the entire process is gonna come down to the prep work. That is the most important thing. It's not the sexy thing that anybody wants to hear. It's not the fun part. It's not like you can get a lot of creative content to show people out of, but this is where the magic truly happens. Taking your time, sanding them properly, scuffing them up, really roughing up the surface. I always say we really need to make things ugly before we can make them pretty again. So the design process for the stencils themselves can start in something like Photoshop or an Illustrator, depending which one you're a little more comfortable with. Or if you're lucky, you can try to find the images online. And then once we load them into the actual stencil cutting program, the one that we use comes with the stencil cutter. So we use a Silhouette Cameo as our cutter. We then use Silhouette Studio as the stencil cutting program. It's free to download online as soon as you purchase any of the stencil cutters. And then from there within the program, you just really need to learn the ins and outs of cutting different types of stencils, the materials you're gonna be working with, vinyl or anything else. But the vinyl we use to cut most of our stencils you see us use here on the channel is gonna be the Oracle 811. So those are some of the most frequently asked questions that we get every single day. We do wanna continue this, so we're gonna talk about 10 other questions that we get asked very frequently also. However, we already have some long detailed videos that we think will be more beneficial for you guys to watch rather than hearing me just answer them for about 20 seconds or so. So the first one is gonna be on how to airbrush a gradient. And these initial coats don't have to be perfectly even and blended into each other because we're gonna take the steps necessary later in order to really make these blends super buttery smooth. What airbrush do you use? So for those of you that are really interested in picking one of these up, we decided that we wanna go ahead, break this down piece by piece, and just kinda of talk about what each of the pieces do. How to properly price your custom sneakers. The US Department of Labor recommends that a fine artist receives around $25 an hour or so, and let's say a project's gonna take you eight hours, you would then take your hourly rate, 25, times eight for the project, and you would come up with $200 to charge the client. How to do a splatter print. 
grab an old toothbrush and just really flick at it with your thumb. And this is the best way for you to get the most tiny little splatter all the way around these. Just a little hint of that metallic gold everywhere is really gonna help these, I think. How to paint Yeezys, airbrushing, and hand painting. Unless you really spread that fabric by hand and fill it in with the paintbrush, you're gonna have white peeking through when your client ultimately puts his foot in here and spreads the entire fabric. How to dye translucent soles. This is by starting everything off with a very tiny detailed brush and going ahead and laying down an outline around everything first. How to paint with a toothpick. So I think that one of the first spots that anybody can utilize this toothpick technique is when you're doing some of the details that come with the branding of any shoes. So for example, we're gonna be working with this Jumpman stitching on the back of this Jordan 1. When to use duller. And now you can see on this left shoe where there's no added duller that we have a much more of an overall sheen to it. It looks painted. And to me, that's the thing that we're overall trying to avoid. Everything you need to know about prepping a pair of cleats. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take our detail sander and attach a few different sheets of sandpaper directly to it. We're gonna go ahead and give the entire project a few passes with each different level of sandpaper that we're using. How to take better photos of your custom sneakers. So if you're ever working on a pair of red cleats, you have an automatic winner that you can just throw them up against the green grass. Those complementary colors, you're gonna have they're gonna pop right off the screen. So uh, we're out in the front yard right now and I just wanna point out that half of the front yard is uh, in direct sunlight and then half of it is in shade. You always wanna go to the shaded area. If you guys have watched a lot of our content and you're looking to learn even more, please consider checking us out on Patreon. This is where we have a lot of exclusive content that doesn't make it to YouTube. If you wanna learn about taking a really deep dive into some multi-layer stenciling, our creative process, and a ton of other things, please check us out. But thank you guys for your continued support here on YouTube. It means the world to us. We'll see you guys in that next video.